for your time this morning. Well, it is absolutely my pleasure. I have out my globe as we speak, and uh, I am putting a, a finger on where uh, I am and another where you are, and Jeepers, you are really, you're just as far away from me as you can humanly be <laughs> and uh, still be uh, subjected to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, international corporations. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're a long way away, and I promise not, not to grill you too much, but uh, we'll see how we go. Well, that... you can, uh, uh, by the way, grill away, and there's uh, nothing that I, I don't uh, mind talking about. Oh, terrific. Last night I was actually just sitting back and listening to your Bicycle album, your, your mm-hmm. last album, and I was reading the liner notes, and you mentioned uh, how recording is always the furthest thing from, from your mind. Is, is that also the case when you're writing a song? You don't really write with a finished product in mind? Well, sometimes that's the case, but... but um, uh, I have the very, I, I, I can't pick and choose my career, John. And so what happens is that sometimes I write because I'm deeply moved. Other times I write on assignment. Um, um, uh, it, it, it takes on many different, um, uh, uh, it takes on many different things, uh, at different times. So, uh, uh, but I can tell you that I'm always delighted when a uh, lovely melody shows up in my guitar. Right, that makes all the difference. Yeah, it, it, it certainly does. And, uh, and you know, it doesn't... Um, uh, uh, it, it's so amazing to me. You know, I'm just sort of a, uh, a guy who hangs out and, and makes music and, 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 and does shows and lives his life, and when all of a sudden a beautiful melody appears in my guitar or a lyric comes into my brain... It's just so, uh, it's so unbelievable. It's like, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like it comes out of nowhere. And, oh, <laughs> there it is. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's always um, seemed that way to me that those things seem more important to you than you know, commercial success or, or anything like that. Well, you know, let's not be fooled here. My, uh, I am a professional musician. And I'm a professional songwriter, and uh, if I can uh, make a living writing my own songs, that's great. If I need to make a living uh, writing commercials or jingles or, or whatever, I'm also delighted to do that. Mm-hmm. You still enjoy the, the recording process as much today uh, as, say, 20 years ago? Well, the, the reality is that I enjoy it so much. I enjoy all aspects of my career so much more today um, than, uh, than I ever did uh, uh, when, I was, when I was first starting out. Because um, next year it'll be 30 years that I've been touring and making albums. And, you know, I'm just a... Uh, uh, I'm just a... Uh, I'm, I, I'm so familiar with it now, and I realized, uh, I realized at the age of 46 what an incredible gift it is mm-hmm. and, uh, and how, uh, uh, how fleeting not only uh, such a gift is, but, but um, uh, such a life is. You know, they're they're uh, truly here today, and, uh, you know, we're given about uh, 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 oh, 40, 45 minutes on the planet, and uh, I've already uh, gone through 20 of those minutes. <laughs> Are you more comfortable on stage or in, or in the recording studio? Oh, please, I love being on stage. <laughs> the notion of being able to show up in front of my audience, pick up a guitar, play songs, hang out with my audience, it's, that's the most fun I have. Right, it's more than any other part of the job. Well, with the exception of the actual writing the song, when the ideas are popping into my brain that's the most wonderful but what comes in second is playing live and and going on going on sort of the the adventure of going on the road and 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 um, going to either new places or familiar places again uh, seeing people um, meeting either new people or seeing people who have seen me many times before it's all very very pleasant so much you actually uh, teach it too don't you yeah yeah I uh, I teach a course at a uh, uh, at a college called the Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Uh, many people think that's in Berkeley, California, but that's not so. The Berkeley College of Music is in Boston, and it's a uh, jazz pop music school. Uh-huh. And um, uh, indeed, we have a, a lot of international students. Um, we have a we have a great quantity of students from Japan and uh, uh, and from. Um, uh, uh, Asia, Korea, um, uh, uh, Taiwan, and um, uh, it's, it's really, uh, uh, and what I teach there is I teach a stage performance class, 
which is it's a class which sort of speaks about the a combination of the practical uh, about how to you know, tour and how to be on stage and the things you need to do, along with sort of the spiritual aspect of being a performer. Right. Would you say that uh, teaching others performance techniques and skills has helped you, in a way, hone your own skills in, in those areas? No question, John. Uh, incalculably, it's, uh, it, it really uh, uh, it sharpens me up like a, like a straight razor, uh, you know. And, it, and also, it'll, it forces me to articulate the things that I've always sort of naturally done. Uh-huh. Now, with two brothers and one sister also musically inclined, where did the initial influence stem that led you all to, to music? Well, first, uh, uh, as your, as your uh, listeners may or may not know, I'm the younger brother of James Taylor, who is, of course, a, uh, an absolutely wonderful singer and songwriter. And uh, James really taught me how to play guitar. But we had an older brother, uh, Alex, who uh, passed away about four years ago. And uh, uh, our oldest brother, Alex, really was our, was our main, uh, he was the guy who brought music into the house, and he was also the guy who first fought the battles with my parents about um, that, that music was sort of a viable thing to do. Uh -huh. He really uh, set James and I upon that path. Right. The rest followed. <laughs> the being in any way an annoyance to you over the years having your work compared to, to that of James? Well, you know, I, I gotta tell you, it's, uh, it's much better to have your uh, work uh, compared to uh, 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 James Taylor. You could do a great deal worse oh, than that. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a very big James Taylor fan. Um, you know, sometimes I have a tinge of sadness that, that I live in James's shadow. But if you look at it objectively, what you see is that is that I uh, I have this absolutely wonderful career. Uh, I play all over the country, indeed all over the world, with the glaring exception of Australia, I might add. <laughs> um, uh, I and and uh, I have a wonderful career. I write songs, uh, uh, and and the thing that's really maybe most exciting is that it's really it. I I'm given an opportunity to observe the world without being observed. Uh, did you, when you were a kid, John, did you ever wish you could be invisible? Invisible? Yeah, yeah, I think I know what you're getting at. Well, sometimes I have the wonderful ability to be both invisible and seen. I mean, it's, 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 um, uh, I have to tell you, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's a wonderful career, and if you and if anybody needs to know just how great my career is, all you have to do is call my brother James and ask him <laughs> how good is Livingston's career, and James will tell you it's a great career. Yeah. You uh, have the two of you ever contemplated actually recording or, or performing together? Well, we've recorded a couple of songs together, and James periodically records uh, songs of mine on his, uh, for instance, on his latest album. There's a Livingston Taylor song, uh, uh, a song that my wife Maggie and I wrote called Boatman. Oh yeah, and he recorded that and did a did a lovely job of it. It is so much fun, I'll tell you. Let me, in case in case your listeners were wondering, uh, 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 if it's if it's fun um, uh, to to hear a uh, great recording artist record one of your songs. Let me put it to rest right now. It's wonderful. You also run the the management side of your career uh, from home there. Uh, obviously, that would have its advantages. Are there any disadvantages at all I in doing that? What, to having management at home? Yeah. Well, you know, Maggie, my wife's my manager, and, uh, and, and our, um, you know, the good thing about our career is that it's small enough to not, be, uh, to not require sort of a, uh, um, uh, a large corporate structure to handle. And, um, you know, the disadvantage is that we have a... We have <laughs> We were laughing about this you know, the other day because we've turned over our entire house to our career. You know, it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 difficult to shut it off. I mean, it's difficult. We don't we don't close an office door and then leave it. We 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 find that we're uh, running. We're in the midst of our career a lot of the time. So there's no business hours there, basically. Well, we we try to make them, but frankly, we're not very successful. With yeah. Them. You've also, um, something else you've done is you've dabbled a bit in uh, children's books. 
Well, I've I've written a couple of children's books, and uh, and uh, uh, and I'm in the process of writing a textbook for my performance class, and that's a lot of fun, and uh, 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 and and yeah, you know, I just I just do a, um, uh, I do a lot of different things. How did the, the children's books come about? How did you begin? Well, one of the things, I, I, I had some, some uh, uh, they came about the same way songs came about. All of a sudden, an idea sort of appeared in my head, and I wrote it down. One of the reasons why I was able to get my, chol- my, my children's books published um, uh, was that I carried enough of a celebrity and name value from my music that a publisher was willing to help uh, to 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 use uh, my name to help uh, to help exploit the sale the selling of a book, mm-hmm. if you understand what yeah. I'm saying. Sure. And so that uh, that gives that gives me a bit of an advantage, um, uh, and uh, uh, you know it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that it isn't a good book because it is. My 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 books are good, uh, or I like them at any rate. But but. Um, um, you know, one thing always gets the other. I, uh, if, uh, if you, uh, you know, if your listeners, any of your listeners want to be musicians or want to be in uh, uh, show business and want to know what to do, uh, um, uh, I don't know what to do, but no matter what you do, do something. <laughs> in comparison, how challenging did you find that writing for children in comparison to, to say, writing you know, music for adults? Well, the reality is that I, I, I never write children's books and I never write children's songs. I write books that apparently are accessible to children. I always write ideas that are basically appealing to me, John. Um, uh, uh, the, the notion of sort of... Uh, uh, first off, nobody ever wants to write a children's book because, uh, in case you haven't noticed, children don't have any money. And so it would be impossible to sell uh, books to children. What you're selling are you're selling books to or songs to adults Life who children. conceptualize what their children would like. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and so, uh, uh, so you really, um, uh, I'm fortunate to have sort of uh, 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 simplistic ideas and concepts, and uh, and uh, people find those accessible to children as well as adults. Earlier, also that you've done some writing for for television and commercials. How does that compare in degrees of difficulty writing for a specific client rather than you know, for your audience? Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I never write for my audience per se. What I do is I write and then I show my audience what I've written. Uh-huh. I go, "Hey, guys, look at this!" And um, it's not quite the same way when you're writing for a client. Although it's a little bit like that. I'll write something that appeals to me, and then I'll go to to the client who's hired me, and I'll say, "Hey, this is the." idea I got. What do you think? And they'll, um, uh, I think this is so cool. And either they'll agree or not, or disagree, and uh, uh, we'll proceed from there. Um, I must say that often I will have a concept for where I want a, uh, a, a corporate idea to go. And if they don't want that, they'll say, yeah, but I want to get rid of this line. And some of the lines I can compromise on, and others of them I'll just, I'll just say, uh, 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 no, no, this is the essence of what I was writing about. And if you, want to take, if you don't want to use this, then you're better hiring somebody else, saving your money and hiring somebody else. Fair enough to, yeah. And, and I don't mind doing that, and I don't feel badly about it. You know, I just, uh, uh, um, uh, but but uh, I'm very opinionated when when a client approaches me where I think the client should go. Mm-hmm. And but I say that early to them. I say I'm not, you know, um, uh, there's a certain point that I'm that I can work with you on this. But beyond that, uh, you know, I'm not running a democracy. And uh, and you know, this is the way I perceive it. And if you don't agree, then you know you don't have to take it. But but I'm not going to change it. Uh, um, you know, I'm delighted to change. Uh, 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 certain parts of it are just, I, I can't change. Yeah. You carry songs around in your head for a while before you actually get them down? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I have, uh, have some lovely melodies that I'm carrying with me right this minute. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, it's funny because I'll walk along. I'll, I'll just be, in a, you know, I'll be, uh, 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 um, you know, I'll think about them, you know, ba ba da ba ba da ba da ba da ba da 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 and I'll just think about a melody, or uh, um, uh, and, it's, and it's fun. And I'll work on it, and then if no lyric comes to a, uh, comes to accompany it, then I'll just set I'll just set it aside, and I'll wait uh, and, and figure that 
sometime either a lyric will show up or it won't. Right. Would you call yourself a prolific writer? Can you churn them out at a, at a good rate? Or? Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 I can't turn out good ones at a good rate. Uh, <laughs> when I, uh, I, can, I can turn out somewhere between poor and mediocre at quite a rapid clip, but uh, <laughs> I just don't bother anymore. Um, right. It just doesn't interest me. So, no, I'm not a terribly prolific writer. Um, as I look back over my career, I seem to write about... A song every two months, and that's just sort of the way it goes through good time or bad or happy or sad or whatever. It's yeah. just, that's the way they sort of fall out of me. And you're comfortable with that? Well, no, I'd like to really be writing an unbelievable song <laughs> every 30 minutes, but guess what? It ain't happening. It doesn't happen, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, as long as we're wishing for stuff, um, uh, I want to be have a full head of hair and be 17 again with my present brain. Oh, me but too. But that's not happening either. <laughs> I'll go along with that. Yeah. Has your approach to songwriting um, altered much over the years, the method of, of how you go about it? Yeah, what, what really has changed is, is I, have much more, um, uh, uh, I, I have much more control over the process now because I'm a much more, uh, I study music uh, uh, very hard and I have for many years. And so now I have sort of, as an arsenal, I can think to myself, well, jeepers, you know, I really need a key change here. And, uh, and I want to get into the key change in a certain way. And I really have that ability to, um, I, I have those tools now that I didn't have when I was younger. If you had to pin it down to one thing, what, what for you would be the, the best subject matter for a song? Well, please, the subject matter that, that the entire human race from... Australia to the United States and every and any place in between, all homo sapiens are interested in one subject, and that subject is reproduction and all the ramifications thereof. So what you write about, ultimately what people want to hear about is love gone right and love gone wrong. Yep, yep, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, with an occasional sort of uh, protest song or something th thrown in, but not too many of those. Just to mix it up Basically, a bit. Uh, love songs with a, uh, uh, I'd say about 2% um, uh, uh, protest, 88% um, uh, 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 love, and 10% uh, uh, party songs. How do you spend your time away from music? I believe you, you've got a, a pilot's license. Yes, I'm a pilot. Uh, I'm an uh, instrument-rated single-engine land pilot, is what they call it in the States. Those are the, those are the ratings that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a little uh, uh, 1964 uh, Cessna six-passenger fixed-gear airplane. And uh, I just torque up my little airplane. And uh, Actually, the only two countries on the, on the planet that are really good about letting people just go out and fly are Australia and uh, the United States. Right. Um, you know, other countries put terrible restrictions on people who want to go fly. Do you listen to a lot of music at home? And, and if so, what, what, what mainly is uh, on your CD player? Um, I do. It's interesting because I don't listen to... to um, that much music per se, I let music find me. But when I, when I, I, I don't differentiate, John, between music that comes out of a CD player and just the sounds that come out of the air. To me, it's all music. It's all, it's all tones. It's all, uh, frequencies. And, uh... And, you know, I mean, I love Take Six. Um, uh, I love uh, uh, good Garth Brooks. I love, um, uh, uh, I was watching uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire today on the, on the television, and they were, they were great. And uh, um, so, so uh, I, 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 when I ride in an elevator and I, and I sing a, uh, um, uh, uh, and I hear a good Gershwin melody, um, that's as exciting to me as, uh, as anything I would put on my own um, uh, stereo. So rather than sort of choose it, I let it find me. Fair I let enough. what sounds are out there come to me. Right. Are you a great observer of, of the, the current music that's going around? Am I a good observer of it? Yeah. Or... Uh, I, uh, I am not. Uh, I've never been very current, and I'm not particularly current now. 
um, you would know far better the music in the uh, the Boston area uh, uh, from Aust- uh, Australia. You would know this better than I would. Uh, I'm I'm just not current at all. Right. What's the and, extent? And, uh, sorry. What's the extent of your your live work these days? You're on the road. What? How much of the year? Um, I work about two days a week. So uh, uh, because I just play alone, I go out and I'll play for two days, and then uh, uh, and then I'll come back home. So uh, so uh, whatever that works. You know, a hundred days a year, basically. Mm-hmm. Any plans for a trip down under? Well, oh, please, don't even start with me. You know, apparently my telephone's broken. You're the first person to have been able to get through from Australia, so I can't get in. I haven't been invited yet. Oh, uh, look, we'll have to do something about that. That would, that would, I would, I would look forward to that. Because, you know, my brother James goes down and visits you people Yeah, he's been down a few times, yeah. He has, and he always comes back telling me that it is just one of the most wonderful places on the planet to play. Yeah, oh, uh, look, we'll, we'll have to do something about that for sure. How would you describe a typical Livingston Taylor audience? Well, you know, they're a, they seem to be a friendly enough crew. Uh, sometimes they're not friendly. I don't know. Uh, 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 what the heck? Um, uh, I, uh, one of the things I'm careful not to do is to prejudge an audience. I just show up and see who showed up. And sometimes, uh, 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 generally, at this point in my career, there are people who know who I am. But sometimes I'll go to places where people don't know who I am, and that is so much fun for me. Because I'll start to play, and I know that by the end of the show, I will have disassembled these these uh, poor blokes. And, um, and, and that... That's a wonderful feeling for me, mm-hmm. the notion of sort of taking an audience apart. Um, I generally, uh, uh, for instance, next week I'll go down to a college in North Carolina, and, I, and I'll be playing there. They've got a football game in advance of the show, uh, um, uh, and I won't start playing until 10 at night. And I already know that that's way too late. And so I will have to adjust my show accordingly because because I know I'll be playing to a crowd that's very tired. Right. And right. and but but I'll make the uh, hopefully I'll be able to make the appropriate adjustment and it'll work out fine. Right. Now I believe there's a new album just about to be released. Is that right? Yeah, on a on a label on a small audiophile label called Chesky C H E S K Y. Chesky Records out of New York, and it's a it's an album I call Ink I N K Ink. Right, and uh, you can tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it's a it's a song that I recorded with um, uh, with five other musicians, and we basically recorded it live in a church uh, in uh, the lower uh, west side of Manhattan. And we, uh, I went in with these five musicians, and we recorded the thing. Uh, it took us two days to record it, and and it's a, it's a, uh, the the sound of the record is unbelievable because it's just, it's 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 a beautifully natural sound, all acoustic instruments, and it was it was really a wonderful experience. Mm, lovely, and um, obviously, apart from the new album, any other plans for the remainder of '97? Uh, well, for the remainder of '97, I, uh, I, I just uh, uh, play some music and uh, uh, play music, uh, 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 travel around. I got a lovely fall worth of uh, uh, worth of adventures to go on, and uh, that's about it. Terrific. Uh, you don't sound like anyone who's had any major regrets, so maybe I need not ask you, are there any major regrets over the years? Anything you'd like to go back and change? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I do have, uh, I do have regrets. Um, one, of the, one of my largest regrets is when I was just starting out, when I was just 19 and 20 years old, I played at a series of high schools, and I don't know what the equivalent is in Australia, but, but basically... Uh, um, uh, grades uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. And I played at a series of high schools, and I did about, oh, seven or eight of them. And one of my real regrets is that I didn't do seven or eight hundred of them. Um, uh, the, the people who saw me at those high schools uh, continued to be enormously sort of loyal fans, and I wish that I had done that. Uh, I wish I had played a great deal um, uh, uh, more high schools. 
the other thing that I really wish that I had done um, was was I wish that I'd gotten uh, uh, I've now gotten a lot of musical training, but I wish I'd gotten more musical training earlier in my career. Right. And uh, and I wish that that I had done it mainly on keyboard. But I got to tell you, the uh, uh, in the in the uh, in the spin of things, the regrets are are are, uh, are pretty few. Very it's, few. It's really been a it's been a, 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 a wonderful career so far. And we certainly hope it continues for you. Listen, uh, Livingston, I want to thank you very much for your time. John, that you would call me and speak with me, at, particularly at such an early hour for you, is a total compliment to me. Thanks very much. It's been a joy to talk to you, and I wish you all the best. And, and, uh, let, you. and let's hope we see you down here in the not-too-distant future. I hope you see my craggly face in the, in the great country of Australia in the very near future. <laughs> All the best, Livingston. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you, John. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.